Let's review kinetic and potential energy. Kinetic energy is energy of motion. All tiny chemical particles are, in some way, in motion. Thus, all have some amount of kinetic energy. The average kinetic energy of a collection of particles is its temperature. Potential energy is stored energy. The potential energy between chemical particles is related to the forces between them, which is based on the identity of the particles and their spatial relation to each other. A system is the part of the universe we are studying at some particular time, whereas the surroundings, that's everything else. In chemistry, a system can exchange energy, but not matter, with its surroundings. That is, in chemistry, we can consider a system to absorb heat or release heat, but in chemistry, we can't take on more atoms into the system some of our atoms can't exit the system. This is a little bit different than in physics, but it certainly works for chemistry. And here are some mostly good examples of chemical systems where certainly energy can be exchanged, for example, between a hot cup of coffee and the surroundings, or the molecules of gas inside a balloon, but generally there isn't much transfer of matter. And in the case on the left, with this thermos, neither much energy nor much matter is exchanged between the system, that is, what's in the cooler and the surroundings. Internal energy, symbolized by capital E of a system, is the sum of all of the kinetic and potential energy of the components of a system. This can be a challenge to quantify. As you know, atoms are very, very tiny. Each atom has some amount of kinetic and potential energy. So to quantify the kinetic and potential energy of each atom and add them all up is not easy to do. The change is much easier to find and we'll talk about that in a little bit. The change in the internal energy of a system would be found by taking the final internal energy minus the initial internal energy. And in chemistry the final internal energy would be the internal energy of the products, and the initial internal energy would be that of the reactants. If the change in internal energy is positive, then that means that the final internal energy is greater than the initial, and if the final internal energy is greater than the initial, then the system has gained energy, and we would call that an endergonic process. On the other hand, if the change in energy is negative, it's because the final internal energy is less than the initial, and the system has lost energy, and we call that an exergonic process. Let's take a short detour, because we've just introduced two new terms, endergonic and exergonic. You might have heard endothermic and exothermic in the past, and are these related and how? Well, the answer is they are related, and here's how. In an endergonic process, energy goes in, period. In an endothermic process, energy goes in in the form of heat. In other words, any time any type of energy is put in, that is an endergonic process. Therefore, endothermic processes, in other words, when heat goes in, is also an endergonic process. But not all endergonic processes are endothermic. Let's give you a couple of examples. How about photosynthesis? Is energy put in in order that photosynthesis happens? And the answer is yes. So this is definitely an endergonic process. Is the energy that's put in in the form of heat in photosynthesis? And that would be no the energy that's put in is in the form of light. Photosynthesis is an endergonic process, but it's not endothermic. A phase change, on the other hand, such as melting or boiling or sublimation, energy is definitely put in in order to make those processes happen. Specifically, it's put in in the form of heat. So phase changes are both endergonic and endothermic. To finish up this slide, in end stuff, the internal energy will increase because you're putting energy in.
we can use the same argument for exergonic and exothermic. In an exergonic process, energy comes out, period. In an exothermic process, energy comes out in the form of heat. Thus, all exothermic processes are exergonic, but not all exergonic processes are exothermic. For example, chemiluminescence. Does energy come out? It definitely does. But it doesn't come out in the form of heat. It comes out in the form of light. Chemiluminescence is an exergonic process, but it's not exothermic. On the other hand, phase changes such as freezing, condensation, and deposition, energy must come out to make those processes happen, and the energy that comes out comes out in the form of heat. Therefore, phase changes like freezing, condensation, and deposition are both exergonic and exothermic. In X stuff, the internal energy of something decreases because energy is being released. The most efficient way to find the change in a system's internal energy, delta E, is by finding two rather easily measured quantities, Q, which is heat, and W, which is the work done. And here's the equation that tells us the change in internal energy, Q plus W. If Q is negative, the system released heat. If Q is positive, the system absorbed heat. These gentlemen, shall we call them, who are taking the polar plunge, hopefully they're raising money for some worthy charity. Otherwise, they're just being idiots. If we consider a polar plunger as the system, then the Q will be negative because they will be releasing heat. If we consider this icy water as the system, then Q would be positive as these gentlemen jump in because the internal energy of the water will be increasing as they draw energy out of the plungers. If W is negative, the system did work. If W is positive, the system had work done on it. These sign conventions are from the system's point of view. Let's summarize. This first statement is a two for one, so I'm going to read it twice, first with the italicized underlined words and then with the capitalized boldface words. In endergonic processes, energy is absorbed by a system. If the energy is heat, we could be more specific and call it an endothermic process. Now I'm going to read it again, this time with the capitalized boldface. In exergonic processes, energy is released by a system. If the energy is heat, we could be more specific and call it an exothermic process. It is not easy to determine the absolute value of a system's internal energy, E. It is much easier to find the change in internal energy, delta E, by measuring the heat transferred, Q, and the work done, W. The positive-negative signs of Q and W are taken from the system's point of view.